Good morning. Today is Monday, the seventh week of Easter, 25th of May. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. O God, who bring light to your church through the learning of the venerable Bede, your holy priest, mercifully grant that your servants may always be enlightened by his wisdom and helped by his merits. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Although it's the feast day of St. Bede, we're recommended to keep to the readings of the Feria, and we continue in the Acts of the Apostles, and Paul uh, is in Ephesus, finding out that many of the believers in Jesus there have only been baptised by John, and haven't been baptised in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they receive the Holy Spirit through their baptism. And the Gospel continues the discourse of the Last Supper, picks up partly where we had previously a reading about metaphors, then goes on uh, to explain it a bit further. So it's John chapter 16, verses 29 to 33. His disciples said to Jesus, Now you are speaking plainly and not using metaphors. Now we see that you know everything and do not have to wait for questions to be put into words. Because of this, we believe that you came from God. And Jesus answered them, Do you believe at last? Listen, the time will come, in fact it has come already, when you will be scattered, each going his own way and leaving me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you all this, so that you may, may find peace in me. In the world you will have trouble, but be brave, I have conquered the world. The Gospel of the Lord. In this feast day of St. Bede, the readings are those of Easter, and so the first reading is Paul at Ephesus, and it seemed it was part of his work as he preached across Asia Minor, discovering many communities where they had listened to John the Baptist and had been baptised in his baptism for repentance of sins. But they hadn't gone on to be baptised in the baptism of Christ and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Paul and his fellow workers were involved in making sure these baptisms were made. The Gospel picks up on the question of metaphors, that Jesus speaks plainly, that he is the Son of God. And when the Apostles say, now we can believe, he tells them quite openly in reply, you will be scattered. And we know that in the short term, the next 24 hours, in the agony in the garden, they will asleep, be asleep when he is praying, and when the soldiers come, they will run away. We know that Peter will deny him three times. And we know from the story of the disciples walking back to Emmaus that the wider group of disciples had given up hope that he was dead and gone and that all his words had come to nothing. And Jesus tells them, No, continue to have faith in me. The world may persecute you and you will have troubles. But by placing your trust in me, you will find peace. And it's one of the two main themes we hear in these readings, peace and joy. This reading emphasises the peace we find in Christ, no matter what the surrounding events are. Talking of events, it's the feast of St. Bede the Venerable, one of the most famous English authors, both in the secular and in the religious world. He was a Benedictine monk from 670 to 730, up in the northeast of England, Jarrow, Sunderland, Weir. He was a scholar, clearly a brilliant scholar. He was a historian, and his history of the church in England is perhaps the most famous history we have of the church, 
and secular historians regard him as the father of history because his emphasis on trying to get the dates right, trying to get the understanding of the flow of history through time was his great contribution, that there was a, a science about history that needed to be respected. Two aspects of this were, first of all, he looked to see if he could help settle the, the problems that they had in trying to settle the date of Easter. Um, as you know, there was a, a great controversy and it continued until the Middle Ages, when exactly and how Easter, the date of which was to be calculated. And it was out of this that he emphasised something else. He emphasised that we should count the, the date by using the years since the birth of Christ. We take that for granted. But in those days, and certainly in his time, they took dates were always in terms of the, re, the local king in the third year of King Ethelbert or in the tenth year of the consul of Tiberius. You always made dates in terms of the local rulers or the national rulers and then counted, counted backwards through the different rulers or local officials. But it, he hadn't invented it, but he took up the proposal that all dates should be calculated from the time of the birth of Christ, what we call AD, Edo Domini, the year of the Lord, and BC, before Christ. In our secular society now, even that's been changed, but the dating has been kept the same. What we call BC, before Christ, is now called BCE, before the Common Era, and what we call AD, Anno Domine, is now called CE, the Common Era. So in secular terms, we're in 2020 CE, but we would say 2020 AD. But it means each time you see the date now, think of Bede, our own local English historian in the early Middle Ages, who was the one who promoted and eventually achieved the agreement that this is the dating system we used. Thank Bede for today's date. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response to the bidding prayers is, Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Christ, the Good Shepherd, laid down his life for his sheep. Let us praise him with grateful hearts as we pray. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Christ our Lord, in the Holy Pastors you reveal your love for us. May we never be deprived of the care you show through them. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Through your sacred ministers, you are present in our midst as the shepherd of our souls. Never cease to guide us through their teaching and encouragement. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. In the saints who lead your people, you manifest your power of healing souls and bodies. Remain always with us to renew our lives in holiness. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. By the example of the saints, you instruct your faithful in the ways of wisdom and love. Through our pastors, help us to grow to the full stage stature of perfection. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. The Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray. Lord God, you enrich your church with the grace of St. Bede's learning. In your love, grant to us who serve you, that his wisdom may always enlighten us, and his prayer help us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us and keep us, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Have a good day.